a lawyer, talk with urgency about why so many middle-class families were filing for bankruptcy. A few years later, I called that lawyer when I was in the Attorney General's office after the markets crumbled and we confronted the subprime lending crisis. She helped us sue and collect from those on Wall Street who played fast and loose with the rules and people's lives. And she helped us keep people in their homes. And over the last five years, I've seen that person be with me and my team as we met with students drowning in debt, veterans, single moms, and people who were the first in their family to go to college. I was in the room with her, Sorry. with these students, as they filled out affidavits to send to the courts to challenge these predatory practices. You see, I've had the opportunity to work with Elizabeth Warren. <laughs> and I believe in her. The work is important. And so are her ideas for big structural change needed to fix things. that I think is important. When she found herself young, married, and no money for school, she went to a community college for $50 a semester in downtown Houston and became a special needs teacher. When she was fired from that teaching job because she was pregnant, she went to law school. And when they didn't want to hire her, to run the consumer agency that she designed and built, she ran for Senate. <laughs> to stop talking, to sit down, she persisted. <laughs> Elizabeth Warren knows what it is to fight for yourself and to not give up. You know where she stands. You know who she stands up to. And you know who she's gonna stand by. Fresh off a great trip to Texas via 20 other states, 27 other states, and Puerto Rico, more than 130 town halls and 50,000 selfies. She's been working her tail off all over this country. So my friends, let me ask you, are you ready to dream big? Yeah! Are you ready to fight hard? Yeah! Let's give a big welcome home to our very own and the president of the United
Since the day she was sworn into office, this woman has been fighting to protect working families, and whether that means going toe-to-toe -to -toe with for-profit colleges or rearing back and sucking Exxon Mobil right in the face for one for her support and for her friendship. Thank you, Maura Neely. I am also excited to be joined here today by my friend and fellow warrior in the United States Senate, a champion for women, a champion for seniors, a champion for working families, and a great partner, Ed Martin. Women and friends of women 
filled the Boston Com Common to make our voices heard. And thousands more women and friends of women held sister marches all across this state. Muslim ban, we showed up at Logan International Airport to say our commonwealth and our nation is, has been, and always will be a home for immigrants. <laughs> and when Republicans tried over and over again, to destroy the Affordable Care Act. Moms and dads from Massachusetts flooded the halls of Congress. Faith leaders from all traditions stood together with one clear message. Healthcare is a basic human right and we fight for it. on the LGBTQ community. We banned conversion therapy once and for all. And upheld protection for our transgender neighbors, friends, and loved ones. We stared down threats against sanctuary cities. Yep. We scrubbed archaic reproductive rights laws off the books. And we told men who thought they could control women's bodies, hands off. across this commonwealth to make history. We said, change can't wait. And may Diana Presley, the first African American. And we didn't stop there. Democrats won up and down the ballot across the commonwealth sending a dynamic group of progressive, diverse, new legislators to the State House. I love it. Yep. There's so much to talk about, but I've got to mention just one. Rachel Rollins was elected as the first woman <laughs> over our democracy, but Massachusetts has refused to let chaos and corruption snuff out our light. And why? Because we understand the power of people. We know what it means to stand together, to fight together. With Trump in the White House and Mitch McConnell calling the shots in the Senate, <laughs> but with both of them, the odds are stacked against us every single day. Nevertheless, we persist. Yeah! And at a time when immigrant families are under siege, we're building bridges, not walls.
job to do in 2020. Beat Donald Trump. over there, the entire structure of our system has been rigged to prop up the rich and powerful and kick dirt in the face of everyone else. Pick any issue you care about, and it is painfully obvious. Tax breaks and giveaways favor the rich. Environmental regulations line the pockets of drillers and polluters. The criminal justice system destroys millions of people and tears communities of color apart. Right. The racial wealth gap locks families out of opportunity generation after generation. The list goes on. Student debt, the cost of health care, housing, child care, the yep. epidemic of gun violence in this country. Yeah. We face enormous challenges, but these challenges are all connected. They are all rooted in the ability of the wealthy and the well-connected to get Washington to work for them and to leave everyone else behind. That is wrong, it is fundamentally un-American, and that's why I'm running for president of the <laughs> Yeah. 
corruption in our government. If we're going to save our democracy, we need to be the party of big structural change.
parties, we will not be a party that nibbles around the edges. That's right! Our Democratic Party will be the party of big structural change! Trump and his billionaire buddies have to try to stay in power. We know what they're trying to do, what they're planning, and we know how to beat it. You know, Trump works every day to divide us into as many factions as possible. Pit white people against black people, straight people against queer and trans people, Christians against Muslims and Jews. City dwellers against people in small towns in rural America and everyone against immigrants, at least black and brown immigrants. Because if we're all fighting each other, Trump thinks no one will notice that he and his partners in corruption are stealing more and more of our country's great wealth and leaving less and less for everyone else. filled with optimism because I see what's happening around this country. Now, I've done 130 town halls. I've been to 27 states in Puerto Rico. I've taken thousands of unfiltered questions. Oh, and the big measure of democracy, I've taken over 50,000 selfies. Yeah! And I meet people every day who are ready to fight back against Donald Trump's hateful vision of America. <laughs> Millions of grassroots Democrats are ready to fight. Millions of independents are ready to fight. Shoot, I've been doing selfies with Republicans who are ready to fight. to come together across lines of difference. This opportunity to unite against the dark forces seeking to divide us. This opportunity to create an America that can be defined by unity, not by division. An America that can embrace belonging, not resentment. An America that can live through courage, not fear. An America where no matter the color of your skin, who you love, how you worship, where you were born, or what zip code you're in, there is no doubt that America belongs to you. Yeah. Yes. These are hard times in America. Dark times. But I am not afraid. <laughs> and for Democrats to win in 2020, you can't be afraid yes. either. This is our moment in history. This is our moment to dream big and fight, fight hard. hard.